Hi again, Linear Algebros. It's Mr. C here, and as advertised in my last video, I'd like to show you how to go ahead and solve uh, Part C of that last example coming out of Section 3.4. Um, part C states that you want to check the answer to Part B by solving the non-homogeneous linear system directly. Now what I have up here is just a recall of what that general solution looked like. You may recall from Part B, we just took the specific solution that was given to us in the instructions and added to that the general solution of the homogeneous linear system. What we want to do is now verify uh, that this is correct by solving the non-homogeneous linear system directly. So to do that, what I would suggest doing is putting the non-homogeneous linear system uh, in an augmented matrix format setting, much like the homogeneous linear system. So top row, going to have entries 1, negative 2, 3 and 2. Second row, 2, 1, 4. And 7. Third row, 1, negative 7, 5. And negative 1. Using a graphing calculator, go ahead and RREF this matrix. And you'll get the following entries. 1, 0, 11 fifths, which were the same three entries from our homogeneous linear system, by the way. But over to the right, uh, we don't get 0 this time, we get 16 fifths. Second row, 0, 1, negative 2 fifths. Again, these would be the same three entries in the second row from the homogeneous RREF. But on the right hand side, we don't get 0 either, we get 3 fifths. Bottom row, as you might suspect, is going to be all zeros. Now, based on the entries in the RREF version of this matrix, we would still have to define a parameter, and the variable that needs the parameter is z. So right underneath this, let's do that. We'll say let z equal t. Now, in a similar vein as to what we did for the homogeneous linear system, we'll rewrite x, y, uh, and z, again, uh, in terms of the parameter. All right, so the equation for x, or yeah, the parametric equation for x, based on row 1, is going to be 16 fifths minus 11 fifths t. The parametric equation for y is going to be 3 fifths plus 2 fifths t. And we already know that z is equal to t. As an ordered triple, the general solution of the non-homogeneous um, linear system, we'll say gs and h, is going to be, let's write our vector x. And if we convert this to an ordered triple, we'll have 16 fifths as the first component, well 16 fifths minus 11 fifths t as the first component, I should say, 3 fifths plus 2 fifths t as the second component, and then t as the third. Now this doesn't look exactly like the general solution that we got in part b, um, but I'm gonna steer us in that direction. Here's kind of a trick. What we want to do is imagine this ordered triple as a combination of two different ordered triples. Now I claim that the first ordered triple that you'd use in that combination has 16 fifths as the first component, 3 fifths as the second component, and then 0 as the third component. So this would mean that the second ordered triple would have to be negative 11 fifths t as the first component, 2 fifths t as the second, and then t as the third component. Take a moment to convince yourself that if you were to add these two vectors or ordered triples together, you would get um, the original ordered triple. All right, so it's starting to take the form of the general solution that we got in example part b. Um, in the sense that, you know, we are seeing negative 11 fifths t, comma 2 fifths t, and t. But in part b, 
the ordered triple that we were adding to the general solution was 1, 1, 1. So why are we not seeing that? Well, the thing is, there's more than just one specific solution to the non-homogeneous linear system. Um, 1, 1, 1 isn't the only solution to the non-homogeneous linear system. I mean, if we were to plug 16 fifths, 3 fifths, 0 uh, into the linear system, non-homogeneous linear system, that is, uh, we would see that this is also a solution. So the thing is this. Um, what I'd like to do is show you with what we have right now that 1, 1, 1 um, can be formed by using these two vectors and a specific uh, value of the parameter t. And if, if we can show that that works, then um, this is allowable as kind of like another version of the general solution of the non-homogeneous. Non All right, so with that, I'm going to pick on um, a particular value of t. Let's have t equal 1. All right, if t is equal to 1, then hopefully one of my solutions uh, would be 1, 1, 1, okay, after combining these two. And if so, then uh, this is okay. This is a verification um, to our uh, solution that we got in part b. All right, so if t is equal to 1, then x is going to equal 16 fifths, 3 fifths, 0, plus negative 11 fifths, 2 fifths, 1. Combining the corresponding components, we would have 16 fifths minus 11 fifths, which gives us 5 fifths. 3 fifths plus 2 fifths gives us 5 fifths. And then 0 plus 1 gives us 1. Of course, simplifying the first two components, we get 1, comma, 1, comma, 1. So even though this doesn't look exactly like the general solution we got in example part B, um, this solution would provide us with a specific solution 1, 1, 1. Ultimately meaning that this is okay to have as kind of like an alternative general solution to the non-homogeneous linear system. All right, I hope that all makes sense. If not, feel free to contact me. Of course, we can also discuss this in class. Otherwise, thanks again for watching another video, and I hope you all have a great day. Goodbye.